going back through the second decade of The Simpsons for that ranking video, that was tough. Not just because they made so many bad episodes, not just because it's still not as straight of a decline as you'd think, but also because it's a lot harder to tell the seasons apart. When Al Jean got back in the showrunner's chair in season 13, he went out of his way to put everything back to normal, after the tumultuous reign of Mike Scully. He went so far as to commission an entire episode that stated his goals. Season 13, episode 7, Brawl in the Family. After five holdovers from season 12, this was the first canon episode he'd run since Simpson tied in season 9, and the very first time he'd done it alone. While She of Little Faith would air before it, this was DABF 01. This would ensure viewers that Al Jean wasn't just going to repeat older episodes with half the humor and impact, right? This episode has a story, but it has no structure. These all happen, they all lead into one another, and are then forgotten. It's one of those. One day at Springfield's Republican Party HQ, the rich Texan suggests their next act of evil be to repeal all pro-environment laws, and Springfield gets so polluted that acid rain pours in. It ends up melting the Simpsons TV antenna, and because they don't have a VCR, the family plays Monopoly to pass the time. It doesn't go well. The police send a robot in that covers them in taffy and they're all arrested. Remember when this episode was about acid rain and the destruction of the environment? That cleared up. In prison, the Simpsons are visited by Gabriel, a social worker who tries to mend their fractured state. He does this by writing about them in a notebook for a bit, then taking them to a forest to bond. He and Homer almost get attacked by cougars, that's a thing that happens in an episode that starts about acid rain. Maybe that makes sense, maybe it doesn't. But as they drive home, they couldn't be any closer of a family unit. You know, we've been through some 280 adventures together, but our bond has never been stronger. Could this be the end of our series? Of events? This was 440 episodes ago. Aren't all these jokes about the show's long run adorable now? But Disaster meets them at the front of the house, as they're greeted by Amber and Ginger, the women whom their Ned married in Vegas back in Viva Ned Flanders. So, nothing that happened in Act 2 matters anymore, Gabriel just gives up and leaves the episode. We instead spend the rest of it on a marital threat. Marge says this is the worst thing Homer's ever done, for real this time. She kicks him out of the house for good. For real this time. Judge Constance Harm just rubs salt in the wound by refusing to divorce Homer and Amber. I don't even think the writers like her. I really like how Marge changes her mind on Homer though. He runs around with a doghouse on his head and that's enough to charm her? Makes total sense, does it not? The way they resolve the problem is even better. They get Amber drunk and make her marry Grandpa, so she'll never set foot in Springfield again. Meanwhile, Ginger's conflict with Flanders kind of resolves itself after two unrelated scenes. So the moral of the story is, don't play Monopoly while it's raining acid, or else you'll start a domestic situation, get a social worker who'll put you in mortal danger, meet your Vegas wife again, and have to marry her to your father to scare her out of town. This whole story is just a run-on sentence with no solid theme or throughline. The thing with making episodes about four different things is that they ran out of ideas faster than they should have. On the face of it, Brawl in the Family is a pretty bad episode, but maybe it's brilliant in its badness. For starters, even though the story's tough to follow, they tell pretty good jokes all around. Another case of Monopoly-related violence, Chief. How do those Parker brothers sleep at night? And in terms of the way it's all written, it feels like one long meta-commentary about the show's recent past and what it would become in the future. People have already interpreted Gabriel as a stand-in for Al Jean, being a well-regarded figure who'd return The Simpsons to its former glory. Some have pointed further that they go the extra mile and interpreted the intrusion of a Scully-era incident as an allegory that the show was beyond fixing. Personally, I don't think that's the intention. Going further into the Vegas Wives and how they've affected the Simpsons and Flanders families could be their way of fixing them up. But I honestly think Viva Ned Flanders is a pretty good episode because it gets so immersed in the spirit of Las Vegas. 
down to the open ending, that this was a life-changing event that they should never mention again. Going out of their way to address it as a serious problem completely loses the point of it, and a lot of the better Scully episodes. They did a better job bringing Amber and Ginger back in season 18 by having them in a way, this can kind of be seen in hindsight as a prelude to what Al Jean would bring to the series. A more sober tone that favoured more devastating stories that put relationships on the line. Especially Homer and Marge's marriage. Even if I wanted them to tell a compelling story that would test their marriage, they don't do a lot to make it convincing. Then again, The Simpsons never had a completely stagnant tone, how is the scene in the forest any zanier than the stuff in Call of the Simpsons? We already had the family play Monopoly in Season 3, we've still got some jokes to make out of that game, we're still the same show you watched 10 years ago! Homer mentions Tinseltown and its second golden age, wink wink, nudge nudge. Something weird about the animation on this episode is that there are a few shots where characters simply don't have pupils, they forgot to ink them in. I miss the cell look as much as the next guy, but if errors like this kept slipping through the cracks, they were better off going digital late than never. Despite the story being terrible, I won't deny that this was a funny episode, but a lot of the best lines are unrelated to the story. Think of this line at Moe's. Geez, Homer, I thought someone with two wives would be happy. No, you're thinking of someone with two knives. I gotta tell you, this is pretty terrific. That's the whole scene. They cut back to the house right after. Another highlight is the weirdly anthropomorphic way the Cougars start to act. I theorize it had something to do with the acid rain. And Jerkass Homer finally giving Jerkass Homer what for. And the fat guy. How oh, I lose him. <laughs> Not everything's a winner though. Why is Millhouse bleeding just for this one joke? Why did they push Homer thinking Gabriel was an angel for so long? And the punchline for the sandwich joke is noticeable from a mile away. Faster! Faster! Oh, you do that like a pro! Oh no, she's making him a sandwich! Use both hands! Brawl in the Family is not a standout episode on its own merits, but it's notable for single-handedly reshaping The Simpsons. It became something older here, more sedentary with its ideas and trends. While season 11 and 12 were filled with frantic attempts to keep the show provocative, somehow, 13 was more focused on turning it back into something people were familiar with. Right after this was another Prohibition episode, then another Homer Gets Injured episode, then another Marriage Crisis, then another Bart Love Story. It was no longer about being subversive or radical, and they signaled that by making the most subversive and radical episode they possibly could, while keeping the tone suspiciously ordinary. That's the end of that chapter. We fancy ourselves all reliable now. Call us zombie Simpsons if you must, but with all that tween angst out of our system, we're gonna keep on rocking forever, 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 forever. Shh. You crapped out, Vegas Mom.